In this video, I want to go ahead and pretty much cover everything related to the shader stutters. So because we have our project packaging up, we can connect with play with other clients and all that stuff through EOS. Uh, now is pretty much a good time to go ahead and kind of get that pipeline set up to where we can, you know, handle pre-caching. Well, I guess you could say handle dealing with the bundled PSOs. So to begin, uh, I'm going to show you basically kind of more or less what I'm referring to. So I just made a fresh packaged build. So let me go to it. I'm going to create a shortcut off the executable and run clear PSO driver cache. Now this will treat it as if there are, well not treat it, it's going to basically wipe the shader cache that we have already made just by, you know, working with it in the editor. So this should give us a closer to real world experience of what someone might have when they first load the game. So I'm going to go ahead and load it up. And you can see it takes a while. We had a lot of stuttering as we we're initially loading in. And I'm going to specifically set for this kind of video to make everything quick. I'm going to set the scalability to three. So it might already be there by default. And I also want stat unit graph. So we can see at the bottom left, basically our frame times. So everything's smooth, you know, as we move around, you know, all that's just fine. Now watch when I shoot. You can see we have a nice little stutter. Shoot again. Have one more. Not sure exactly if that's just one for particle, one for the case or what it is, but you can see now that I'm shooting, everything is nice and smooth. Likewise, if I go to the mystery box, uh, pretty much all the wall weapons are in the mystery box, except for, I believe, the STG. So the STG is not anywhere. So it's not loaded anywhere, nothing to be seen. So when I buy the box, then it will be. So if we watch our shader, or sorry, our graph at the bottom left, you can see we have another hitch. So when I buy the box again, you can see it is nice and smooth. There is no hitch. So those are kind of the issues that we want to resolve. We want to make it to where when the player has their first experience of the game, which in my opinion is the most important, there are none of those shader hitches. So that's why we're going to work with the bundled PSOs. Okay, so there are a few things we need to do. First off, go ahead and close down your editor. We want to load up the default game.ini and the default engine.ini. So we want to add a few additional commands. Well, not commands, but just set up a new uh, couple additional values. So the first one being the r.shaderpipelinecache.enabled. We want to make sure that's set to 1. And that's going to be under our renderer settings, which I already have right here. Next up. We want to set needs shader stable keys to true off of dev options shaders. And that's it for our default engine. Moving down to our default game, I'm just going to go to the very bottom. We want to go ahead and add B share material shader code and B shared material native libraries, both those to true. And then we can save and go ahead and make our way back to the engine. Okay. Now that we're back here, I want to go ahead and get our project kind of set up because we're going to need to cook and package again. So to begin, the one thing that I do want to do is go to Notch Darn Toten. And this is just because I've had an issue in the past with uh, basically the player start. I'm not exactly 100% sure as to what the cause of that is, but it was something with not able to uh, basically put the player in a good location. So I'm going to move them away from the wall a bit and just up some and that's it next up i want to start from the main menu so i want to go to project settings maps and modes and we want the main menu to be the game default map so save that and then for testing we're going to go to our core ui folder main menu and where we go to create lobby instead of actually creating a lobby we are simply just going to travel to the map. So we can take this open level, copy, paste, 
and plug it into create lobby. And we don't need any additional options. So now we are ready to test. So the first thing we want to do is create the, I'm going to call them static PSOs. I don't know the actual name, but basically these are the ones that are created when you go through and cook your content. So if we go to saved, we have cooked, windows, our project name, metadata, and then we should have another folder here once we actually cook. So we're going to go to our platforms, project launcher, and go ahead and just package up the project. Okay, now that that's done, if we head back here, we refresh, we can see we have a new folder called pipeline caches. And that has our global and project shaders for SM5 and SM6. And in our case, we really only care about SM6. So we're going to take these and copy. So going back to our project root, we're going to go ahead and store them in a folder that we are going to basically house everything related to our shader caching in. So make a new folder and I'm going to call it PSO collection and just paste them in. So that's kind of our static PSOs. So everything that was generated when we cooked. So now we want to create the runtime PSOs. So let's go ahead and go to our saved build, or sorry, our packaged build. And just like before, we're going to create a shortcut off of our project, well, our executable. And we want to add log PSO and clear PSO driver cache. So log PSO and clear PSO driver cache. So this will basically allow it to go ahead and whenever we find a PSO that we missed, it's going to basically record that and add that into some format in whatever the can't remember the file format and then clear PSO driver cache is going to clear all of our PSOs that we already have cached. So that way log PSO can basically find everything. So, well, not everything, but everything that is visible that we don't already have cached. So we can apply and save and simply launch it. So what I want to do first is I'm going to set my scalability to three again, and this is going to be kind of what I use as a baseline just for the default settings, but I'll explain why in a little bit. Then create lobby. And just like before, you know, we have some of our stutters. We can go through, do a stat unit graph. And likewise before, when I shoot, we get our stutter. And now it's smooth. So I just basically want to run around, kind of look at everything. Don't really need to buy any wall weapon. And just make sure, you know, everything's getting picked up. So we have the stutter with the mystery box. Get that out of the way. And I mean, honestly, that's basically it. At least for this project. Because this project doesn't have a whole lot going on, like nothing really interesting spawning. It's just not... There's not a whole lot to do. But again, this is something that can be automated, so we may or may not set that up in the future. But I digress. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and just close out of the game. So now we want to go to our project again. Well, the project folder. And go to saved. And we now have a folder called collected PSOs. And this we want to copy and put in our... PSO collection, just like we did the others. And we're basically good to go. Now we just need to convert these into a file that Unreal can basically throw in with our packaged build. And to do that, we need to create a new batch file. So we're going to go ahead, make a new notepad file. And I have this here that I wrote down for reference. So basically, these are the, this is basically the command whatever you want to call it that we want to run. So this is going to go ahead and launch the Unreal Editor CMD based upon whatever engine version we're using. And then we're going to pass through the shader pipeline cache tools with the expand option. And here we want to give it the path to our files. So those paths are this, our U pipeline cache, or sorry, .rec.upipeline cache, which is this here. 
And then we have our SHK files, which were created when the, uh, which were our static, I'm just gonna say our static PSOs. And then we have our output location. So you're gonna wanna make sure that these are all correct for you. So these are my paths directly to my SKG Zombies project, PSO collection, and just, just make sure it's correct. Likewise, same thing with your engine directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and start shaping this up. Just remove the little comments I added. And then this here just keeps the console window open so that way we can read the actual output. All right, so the one thing that we have to do, because we are using paths that have spaces in them, such as epic space game and program space files, we need to wrap these in quotes, like so. Same thing, Unreal Space Project. Got to do these as well. So our opening and closing quotes, and then our path as to where we want to put it, because again, it is... Unreal Space Projects. And that should be pretty much it. So go ahead and we can save. And we want to put this in our PSO collection as a batch file. And I'm just going to call it, let's do a generate, we'll do eh, PSO bundles. Probably not the best name, but it works. So once we have that, we have our generate PSO bundles.bat. Let's go ahead and open it up. So we should see it go through, generate a bunch of stuff. And in my case, I do get some errors here. Uh, I've never been able to figure out exactly what these are for, but they don't seem to affect anything in my case. But regardless, we do have a PSO underscore then the name that we have. And one important thing that I want to mention is the actual name of the file. So PSO underscore project name right here, SKG Zombies. This needs to match your project name. So I have SKG Zombies here because my project is SKG Zombies. That's just something I want to point out. So next up, we're going to take this. We're going to copy the PSO file here that was generated. Go to our build, our platform, in our case, Windows, and make a new folder called Pipeline Caches. Did I spell caches right? Okay, yeah, I did. I don't know why, it just looks wrong to me. But we want to put this in that folder. So next up. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and launch the project again because we need to package one more time. And this package build will go ahead and basically have everything in it already so that it can start automatically compiling our shaders when we launch it. So we're going to go to our project launcher, go to our shipping build, and just like before, hit launch. Okay, once it's done, let's go to our text filter and search for PSO. And here you can see we have number of PSOs are 182. So we gathered 182 of them. So let's go ahead, close our project down, go to our saved staged builds. And just like before, we're going to go ahead and create a shortcut. And specifically, I only want to clear the PSO driver cache and display the log. So I'll do hyphen log and hyphen clear PSO driver cache. So now when we run it, we have our log popping up. And what we should be able to see, and I don't know exactly why, but it took a little bit to do the kind of start last time, but we should at some point or another get something related to a log that our PSOs are basically being, uh, what do you call it? Actually, it's right up here. So countered a new shader, yada, yada, yada. That just, you don't have a choice. We already launched it. Actually, it just now popped up. 
So begin next precompiled shader cache task. So it's gone through, it's basically, in no jobs remaining, meaning it's done. It's gone through and it's compiled everything it needs to. So 182, which if you recall from our uh, packaged packaging log, whatever you want to call it, we had 182. So when I hit create lobby and go to the game, actually let me set my scalability to three before I forget. When I hit create lobby to go to the game, you can see it loaded in much faster. Likewise, if I do stat unit graph and I shoot, we have no hitch. So that hitch is gone. Now we can test the mystery box. And check for itch, which we have none because we have already cached our STG. So that is pretty much it. So we can, you know, go through, display the number of shaders that we have left to compile in the main menu in some form of UI, which they did expose in 5.6 that we can actually, you know, access. We don't have to write a C function to, you know, return that information or anything. But uh, yeah. That is pretty much it. Now, in future videos, I do want to cover a little bit more on this because we're not exactly done. So what I'm referring to is different scalability settings or different just general graphic settings, whether that be, you know, for example, your shader quality for, for whatever. They're going to give you different... So let's say we're on scalability three. That's the one we tested on. That's what we gathered the PSOs on, all that stuff. If we were to say switch to to, uh, to scalability 0, 1, or 2, we're going to have a hitch because, let's again, this is also kind of just depending. If our STG had a different, uh, let's say, shader or something or different like quality levels, you know, whatever it's going to be for different types of scalability, then we didn't account for that. So when we did our run through to gather all the runtime shaders, ideally we want to test each and every scalability setting that we have. So this is where I'm talking about. It would be nice to kind of automate it. So that way we're not going through, you know, having to do the annoying cons thing of just run through, play the game, change scalability, run through, play the game, change scalability, and keep repeating this until we've gotten all of them set up because that can take a while, especially depending on the game. Thankfully for this type of game where we only have one map too, um, that's very easy to do. It just takes us a matter of, you know, a minute or so per scalability setting and we're done. But uh, yeah, that is pretty much going to be it for this video and I will see you in the next one. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below where you can also get early access to this entire series.